burn injury also known as burns they are the tissue injury caused by thermal electrical and chemical agents or radiation energy or sometimes even combination of all of these but most commonly they are caused by thermal injury burns caused by thermal injury It means heat different forms of heat dry heat moist heat okay different things are there electrical injury we also talk under burn injury electrocution we say different chemical agents like acid attack alkali attack you have you have heard about these things okay sometimes some people attack another person with these dangerous chemical substances and sometimes if there is a radiation leakage then there also the burn injury can happen burn injury can be fatal can be disfiguring or incapacitating for the patient they can be fatal they can cause death of the patient rather than death or much more common problem than death then leads to disfigurement of the patient just think about it if there is burn on the head and neck area the person will develop very ugly looking scar and the whole appearance will be changed if the person had a bad burn okay of the extremities near to the joint because of the contracture development of the joint they will lose the function of the joint they will lose the function of the joint they lose function of that particular limb so this is known as incapacitating burn injury are the third largest cause of accidental death all over the world so this is some of the important points regarding the burns now the most common cause of burn injury is scalding okay it is scalding of which 80% may be treated as outpatient now scalding is caused by wet okay or moist type of heat for example hot water if we spill hot water on the surface of your body okay and there will be burn this is known as scald incidence of burns is higher during winter month than the summer everybody can give reason here because in winter we want more heat okay we want heat there because winter it's a chilly condition okay to make our cell warm a different forms of heat or heating appliances or devices are there and they can easily lead to burn 75% of burn related death can be attributed to house fire so a different way by which house fire leads to death one is by causing extensive burn there is no doubt about it another one even more important than that is called carbon monoxide poisoning okay carbon monoxide poisoning which is very common in this type of fire so carbon monoxide poisoning is a important part of this lecture okay this is a big lecture i cannot finish this today so we'll take a few more classes now what are the causes of burns so everyone please focus there so let's classify the different types of burn or the causes of burns you can say thermal burn chemical burn electrical burn and radiation burn thermal burn are the most common so scalds okay they are the damage from contact with hot liquids very common for example a hot cup of coffee is spilled on your hand it can cause scald contact burns damage from contact with hot objects okay quite common flame burn and inhalation injury this inhalation injury means the person is trapped inside a room okay which caught fire the person cannot escape from that room now what will happen the person will force to breathe that that hot you know air which is present there and a lot of flames are there so person will have different types of burns and the airway is very badly damaged because of this carbon monoxide poisoning can also occur during inhalation injury another type is a chemical burn 
contact with noxious chemical like alkali as well as acid so there are different types of acid uh, you have studied uh, in chemistry okay during your plus 2 lectures so what are some of the example of those acid just give me the name of those stress of four sulfuric acid very good very good students have already answered excellent sulfuric acid hydrochloric acid isn't it nitric acid all those acids are there sulfuric and hydrochloric acids are very powerful one alkali what is the example of alkali give me one example sodium bicarbonate okay sodium bicarbonate oh, very good bicarbonate. sodium bicarbonate and sodium hydroxide isn't it sodium the hydroxide, hydroxide. hydroxide. exactly yes. potassium hydroxide so so many different both are correct answer sodium hydroxide sodium bicarbonate and potassium hydroxide all of these are alkali they can uh, cause severe burn electrical burn okay electrocution we say electrocution these are high tension injury and even lightning lightning injury is classified under electrical burn okay so many people they die because of lightning attack okay this is a very misfortunate type of cases but these cases occur here and there every time and radiation burn is another type now skin is the organ which is most commonly damaged because of burns okay so let's know a little bit about the skin but trust me every student know this already so this is like a little bit revision for you please pay attention skin is the largest organ in our body so many of uh, of us still believe skin is not an organ right we believe like that but from today onward we have to you know change that belief yes skin is the largest organ in our body and skin has got so many different functions it is a protective function which is most important among all it protects underlying tissues from injury it has a important function of temperature regulation temperature regulation and it does that with the help of autonomic nervous system remember the function of sympathetic nervous system it uh, makes those blood vessels the superficial blood vessels which are present on the skin okay a bit narrower than before so the person cannot lose heat during that time there is conservation of the heat when those blood vessels are dilated there is loss of the heat from the surface of the skin the skin acts as water tight seal so it has got dual function now okay the fluid or water from outside cannot enter into our body until and unless the skin is broken there and other hand water from the inner part of our body also okay will not go easily outside though it can be lost as a result of evaporation skin acts as a sensory organ there are so many important receptors present on the skin and the function of them are the sensation so many other functions are there skin is a site for vitamin d synthesis skin is a site for fat deposition especially the subcutaneous area of the of the skin okay it's a, it's a area for fat deposition skin is a reservoir for blood the, there is extensive you know vascular network on the skin which which is a reservoir for the blood you know these are some other functions you can list there now if injuries occur to the skin then okay what will happen it can easily lead to infection the person is uh, you know unable to maintain the normal water balance and the person is unable to maintain the body temperature if his skin is damaged that what happens in case of burns in burns there is high chance of repeated infection in that area and that infection may lead to septicemia the person loses a lot of water and that's why okay uh, fluid resuscitation is one of the main thing which we do in a case of burn victim and body temperature also can be maintained after severe type of burns okay so we are talking about 
uh, a bit of uh, physiology and anatomy regarding the skin because skin is the most common organ which is damaged by burn injury our skin has got two layers the outer layer is epidermis and the inner layer is called dermis and immediately below the skin there is subcutaneous layer this subcutaneous layer has a lot of fat in it so it is also known as a fatty layer and below that is a fascia and the muscle now right now we are talking about the epidermis and the dermal component of the skin okay now the outer cells of the skin are the dead cells which is known as stratum corneum stratum corneum so in the previous classes i'm sure i have uh, you know highlighted uh, this point to you what are the different layers of the epidermis what are the different layers exactly exactly many of the students have very nicely answered okay there are five layers in the thin skin and there are uh, there are four layers in the thin skin and there are five layers in the thick skin this is how you answer thick skin like palms and soles they have got five layers and thin skin in other parts of the body they have got just four layers so those are important layers are stratum basal okay let's go from the uh, deeper layer towards the superficial layer stratum basal is the deepest one after that stratum spinosum then stratum granulosum and stratum corneum these are the four layers in the thin skin if i talk about the thick skin i need to add one more layer which is known as stratum lucidum so stratum basal stratum spinosum stratum granulosum stratum lucidum and stratum corneum these are the five layers all of you know that now, now the function of these epidermal cells okay are the protective function especially the stratum corneum it has got a protective function it forms a wire, wire uh, carry tight water seal there on the outer aspect and the deeper layer they are the living cells so they continue to multiply and they slowly move upwards okay but the source of all these cells is the stratum basal or the basal layer all the keratinocyte are produced from there and another important functions of these keratinocyte okay with the help of melanin this melanin is the pigment which is produced by melanocyte is okay uh, again the uh, you know protective function uh, this melanin will not allow the ultraviolet rays of the sun to reach the nucleus and by doing so it is preventing the damage done to the nucleus by those ultraviolet ray now the second layer okay second layer is the dermis or the deeper layer is the dermis you can say now dermis has got so many different structures dermis has got nerve ending dermis has got blood vessels sweat gland sebaceous gland hair follicle okay some nerve receptors different things are there so each follicle okay the hair follicle let's talk about it each hair follicle has a small muscle which is attached to that and that is known as erector pylorum or erectus pylorum muscle this erector pylorum muscle is supplied by sympathetic nerve so that when a person is nervous or when a person is afraid okay in this type of situation uh, the hair gets straight in that person and we call that goose flesh appearance on the other hand everybody know the function of sweat gland and sebaceous gland so let's not talk uh, in detail here sweat gland produces sweat okay it has a lot of uh, water and electrolytes in it and sebaceous gland uh, produces sebum this sebum is a moisturizing substance on our skin without enough sebum our skin will become very dry so these are some of the points after knowing this okay let's know about the depth of the burn or you can also uh, you can also tell this what are the di three different types of the burn okay now see here 
It is important to estimate the depth of the burn to assess its severity and to plan the future wound care. So according to the depth of the burn, uh, there are three types. First degree burn, second degree burn, and third degree burn. First degree burn is known as superficial burn. Second degree burn is called partial thickness burn. And third degree burn is called full thickness burn. Now, uh, the subsequent slides will clearly okay, differentiate these three types of burn. So first degree is the uh, a benign type of burn, means it is not very complicated. Second degree is in between, and third degree is the very severe and complicated type of burn. Okay, so what does that mean? We are going from the superficial layer of the skin towards the deeper layer. Now, all of you, please pay attention here. This is a good picture, which will tell you what are these three different types. See here, epidermis is the outermost layer, inner one is the deep dermis, then subcutaneous layer, and the fascia and muscle. So superficial or first degree burn is just the outer aspect of the epidermis. Partial thickness or second degree burn involves the dermis also, along with epidermis and full thickness third degree burn may reach very deep okay it may reach very deep see there even the subcutaneous layer or the fatty layer is also affected sometimes even the muscles the blood vessels nerves all those structures which are present here are affected or destroyed in case of full thickness burn and this is how it looks Now, let's talk about the superficial burn. What are the characteristic feature of the superficial burn? See this? It involves the epidermis. Okay. The epidermis is the superficial layer of the skin. It is characterized by reddening. It looks quite red or erythematous in appearance. Erythematous means red looking appearance there is severe pain as well as tenderness. Everybody know the difference between pain and tenderness, isn't it? What is the difference? Still, let me ask you. Pain and tenderness, what is the difference? Pain and a symptom, sir, and sign of symptoms, sir. And tenderness is... Uh... Sir, basically, sir, tenderness is sort of a discomfort, sir, but like, sir, pain, sir, it is a... Uh, uh, like say it is a complete feeling sir, like a perceptive feeling in the patient sir. like uh, sir, how can I define like exactly the right. tenderness is the pain You're which right. can be feeling when you touch it and the pain is the um, type of pain which can be occur without touching it exactly exactly and, and pain exactly. Of exactly so all of you are correct okay see the the students are answering in a different way okay but the concept is there so if you answer like this we readily accept your answer. Pain is a symptom. Pain is complained by the patient. If they come to you and say, doctor, I've got pain there, that's a symptom. But when you feel that area, you know, when you palpate that area, when you touch that area, look at the face of the patient. If they wince their face, if their facial expression is changed, that means you are causing pain when you touch that area that is called tenderness. So you can easily say tenderness is a sign, pain is a symptom. So that is the difference. So everybody know that thing. There is increased warmth. There is increased warmth because inflammation is going on there. Edema may occur, but there is there are no blister formation in the superficial burn. Blister forms only from the second degree burn onward. This burn blanches under pressure. So when we press there with our hand, you know, it blanches, means it becomes a little bit whitish for a moment. Then again, when we remove our finger or remove the pressure from there, it will become erythematous. A good example of first degree burn is a sunburn, okay, sunburn. Many of us, uh, you know, can be easily affected by sunburn, isn't it? 
especially uh, white skin people, okay, they easily get sunburn and uh, first degree burn usually heal in around seven days time. Okay, so these are some of the important points. At the, at the end, you know, we need to differentiate these different type of burns, okay? So please remember the important points right now. Let's move on. Now, let's talk about the second degree burns. In this second degree burns, the damage extends through the epidermis and involves the dermis now. So dermis is also affected along with epidermis uh, in case of second degree burn. One very, very important point you need to notice, even after the second degree burn, there will be regeneration of the skin. So having said that, the second degree burn is not severe enough to interfere with the regeneration of the epithelium. The skin can still regenerate back. There is still no chance of scar formation in the second degree burn. But it is a relative type of thing, okay? Listen carefully. There is a layer, okay, on the uh, downmost part of the epidermis, and that layer is called stratum basal or stratum germinativum. So let me write that layer for you here because this is a very important concept. Okay, sorry. Right. See there, skull, stratum, germi, nativum, or stratum, basal. Okay, every student know that. But what is the function of this? Why I am bringing this point here? The function is this has got cells which can regenerate. Okay, it they they can regenerate themselves and they can move upward and they can replace all other type of cells in the superficial layer of the epidermis. So now listen properly. If these cells are permanently damaged, okay? If, if it is complete damage of these cells, then there is no source of the regeneration. Then, okay, skin will be replaced by scar. But if even the few number of cells in the stratum germinative nativum are left behind, okay, they can multiply and replace or regenerate all other types of cells. This is a very important concept. Now, how they appear, okay? How the second degree burn appear? It looks moist and shiny appearance. And one of the very, very important point is it has got blisters now, okay? It has got blisters. But uh, all the patient, 100% of the patient may not have the blister, but usually the majority of them have got blisters. It is still a painful condition because the nerves are not completely damaged. It may look salmon pink to red in color, and it usually heal in a longer time, that is seven to 21 days. Let's move on. see this so what can you see in this all of you can you please describe this what can you see here that there are the blisters around the epidermis it's, it's, it's the second blister. degree second, second degree one because of blister. blisters so the presence of blisters mainly exactly now everybody can see bubble of the, under the skin exactly these are called blisters or bubble which contains fluid these fluid are okay what type of fluid these are the exudate, okay? These are called exudate. These are the protein rich fluid which are collected there. So this is clear cut case of second degree burn. Excellent. Okay, now see this? This is another case of second degree burn. Probably, okay, this blister is ruptured here. And look at this, okay? Uh, uh, seat of the skin is peeled off. So again, uh, second degree burn. What about the third degree burn now? What are the important features of third degree burn? 
in this case both epidermis and dermis are destroyed and the burn is reaching a bit deeper even into the subcutaneous fat layer and sometimes even the muscles which are very very deep can be damaged that's why it is a severe type of burn it may appear thick and dry pearly gray or charred black in color so this is the color and this is the appearance okay color may look pearly gray or charred black in color it differs according to situation now this is painless this is a very important point i'm saying this burn is very severe one but it is painless so what is the reason why it is painless because the nerve endings are destroyed okay by the burn the nerve endings are destroyed by the burn that's why uh, this burn though it is a se most severe type of burn is still painless if pain is there then you remember it is due to the intermixing of second degree burn and third degree burn together when in some of the area the nerves are very badly damaged so there will be no pain in other area they are not that you know severely damaged or the burn is second degree so pain is still there there may be minor bleeding but usually bleeding is also absent because the blood vessels are coagulated because of the heat the blood vessels are coagulated the opening of these blood vessels are blocked as a result of that the bleeding is not very severe and one very important point it cannot heal and it require grafting okay that is skin graft because the cells which regenerate are completely gone there so this burn cannot heal it should require the skin graft so these are some of the important points of third degree burn let's move on now look at here this is a picture of third degree burn see this the appearance is a bit of leathery type of appearance okay and it is better felt than the seen now once again because this concept is so important for the students okay some more pictures are providing the same concept here first degree burn second degree burn and the third degree burn so you can clearly see her the outer layer is the epidermis okay there is the epidermal layer you can see it so this is okay the basement membrane we say this is called basement membrane and above that is the epidermis below that is the dermis we can also call it dermo epidermal junction okay the superficial layer of the dermis is called papillary layer okay the deeper is called reticular layer of the dermis look at the different structures present in the dermis these are the blood vessels arteries and veins this is called hair follicle hair follicle okay these are the different types of gland which are present this is a sweat gland and this is called sebaceous gland okay these are the receptors of the nerve look at this these are the bulbous end okay these are the sensory ending so all of these structures are there so first degree burn just the epidermis the superficial layer of the epidermis is affected second degree burn look here till how how deep it has reached the dermis is definitely affected and the third degree burn all the layers epidermis dermis and the hypodermis or subcutaneous layer is also affected this is a superficial partial thickness a second degree full thickness of the third degree burn okay again the same points are written here superficial burns are painful there is uh, no edema it looks red it blanches under pressure these are the important points regarding the partial thickness there is a blister formation usually it looks moist and it is still painful whereas the third degree or full thickness burn looks dry and leathery okay and there is no pain very important point now let's see some of the picture 
okay, and try to find out which type of bones are there. So what do you think? Which type of bones is this? Okay, it's written the first there. Degree. First degree. First degree, sir. Very good. This is the first degree because it just looks red. Nothing else. Just looks erythematous or red. First degree bone. Very easy answer. Good one. Okay. Is another one first degree bone? Look, look how red is the appearance. There are no blisters. Okay, so this is first degree bones. This is first degree bone. This is caused by sunburn. This is called sunburn. First degree bone. Okay, so this is also first degree bone. Also first degree bone. I cannot see any other changes here. Okay, first degree bone. Now see here. There are no blisters. I cannot see any blisters. I cannot see any peeling of the skin. So it is again the first degree one. Looks very irritating to me. But I can see a small blister now here. Can you notice that? See this here. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, yes, sir. sir. Very good. Here also. It's so it has to be the second degree now. It is the second degree burn. It looks a little bit moister than before. Second degree burn. Very shiny as well, sir. Exactly. Now see this. This uh, every student can uh, you know answer this. This is second degree. A lot of blisters you can see there on the surface. Yes. Second degree bone. Now, what what is this classification of bones? Which second one is this? Second, second degree. Second degree. Okay. Very second good. Degree. It looks like it looks like second degree bone. Excellent. Okay. You can always give your reason in medicine. Never shy of giving reason. Even if your diagnosis is wrong, but if your reasons are correct, you know we can accept your answer. But a clear cut one thing is shown there and your reasoning is completely different we cannot accept that answer so it looks like second degree because there are multiple blisters i can see and it looks a bit of moist area here and there and some of the blisters are already ruptured also okay now see this okay second it also, degree. exactly it also looks like second degree it, it doesn't look that bad and doesn't look that very deep at the third degree and I can still see some of the blisters there. In first degree, there is no blister formation. Now, see here, okay? Still second degree, still second degree. This is a clear cut case of scald or moist type of burn. Now, what about this? Third degree. Third degree, sir. Third degree. Penetration into the dermal cell in the nerve, and so this is third degree confirm, sir. Yes, it looks like a very bad type of burn. It looks like a very complicated or bad, severe type of burn. See that? Okay, it looks quite deeper. And some of the areas, still I can see some blisters. So in this area, uh, it is a second degree burn. In this badly affected area, this is a third degree burn. So it depends. Okay, there, there may be a mixture of the burns. Don't think only one type of burn may be there. Okay, there may be a mixture in different places. Second degree here, and this is clear cut third degree burn. This also looks like a third degree. Okay, look look at the classical appearance. This is called charred appearance, a little bit black in appearance. Okay, a deeper type of burn, third degree one. Yes, gray leather like skin is called. Exactly, very good. Okay, see this. This is this is a very bad looking burn. Okay. This is very, very extreme type of burn or complicated type. This has to be third degree burn, third degree burn. And, uh, you know, sometimes what happens, the these digits, okay, are the finger. They are supplied by only one blood vessel. This is called end arteries. If this artery or these arteries are coagulated very badly by the burn, then there may be some gangrenous change which can occur in the tip of this finger also. So these are the secondary complication of the burns. You see there, so many different pictures. Uh, and uh, some of these pictures can be easily asked in your Viva exam. We can simply put these pictures and show to our student and ask what type of burns you think, how can we manage these type of cases like that? You see here, okay? This is the combination of second degree and third degree to me. Combination of second degree and third degree. 
if his skin is peeling from there, this is the second degree burn, okay? And a very extensive looking type, a charred in appearance, leathery type of appearance, this is the third degree. Another third degree type of burn. Okay, see this very bad looking burn combination of second and third degree. These blisters are the a feature of second degree burn and this area uh, probably is the third degree burn. Okay, now with these pictures, let's move further. Now let's talk about the zones of burn wound. If we carefully examine that, you know, area which is burnt, there are different zones we can identify. Now, what are those? They are the zone of coagulation, zone of stasis, and zone of hyperemia. So, zone of coagulation is at the center. Okay, this is a devitalized, necrotic, and dead area. So, it looks a bit of whitish, and there are no circulation as well. Of course, when there is no circulation, then that area die. Okay, so it is known as devitalized, necrotic, and white area. This is zone of coagulation. So another one is a zone of stasis. Zone of stasis. This is a circulation sluggish area, or you can say ischemic zone. Ischemic zone. Uh, this area till now is not dead or is not necrotic. And zone of hyperemia is the outermost or towards the outer area, you know, this is known as inflamed zone. And still there is a good amount of blood flow in that area and it looks a bit of red in color. So let's uh, see some pictures and then you will be very clear what are these three zones here. See this? Take a bit of time and see this please. So, zone of coagulation at the center, surrounded by zone of stasis, and then the outer layer or zone is called zone of hyperemia. The zone of coagulation is the dead, dead area, okay, necrotic area. Zone of stasis is the ischemic area, and zone of hyperemia is still good amount of blood is there. So, zone of coagulation, zone of stasis, and zone of hyperemia, okay. Sometimes uh, there is no zone of stasis if the burn is very severe. The whole area may be zone of coagulation. After knowing this important concept, okay, let's enter in another very, very important part of this lecture. What is the extent of the burns? Okay, how we you know uh, judge the extent of the burns in the clinical practice? Assessment of extent and severity of the burns is done by different method. And this is mainly done only for the second and third degree burn, okay? First degree burns are, are taken not that very seriously and they can be easily managed as an outpatient department. But second and third degree burn, if a, a more percentage of the body surface area are burned, then we need to admit this patient in the hospital and manage seriously. So consider only second and third degree burn when stating the percentage of body surface area burned. There are different you know, rules which we follow. One is called the rule of nine, which may be used to estimate the area burned. And another is called the rule of one. And in this rule of one, the palm of the patient's hand is roughly equivalent to 1% body surface area. Or the palm of your hand, okay, whatever, is equivalent to 1% body surface area. So if the bigger area is affected, then you can say certain percentage of the body surface area is affected by judging how many palms of the patient hands uh, are you know, occupied there. You see there? So let's talk uh, about the rule of one again. The same thing which I am telling now, the outstretched palm and fingers 
approximate to 1% of the body surface area, and it is used to estimate the small bone area. So, but nonetheless, it is one of the way of, of finding out what is the extent of the bone. But it is not very commonly used in the clinical practice as the rule of nine. Now, I want every student, please pay attention on your screen now. Okay, this is a very important concept. See there now? This is a rule of nine for estimating body surface area bone in adults, children, and inf infant. So this rule of nine tells us, okay, about the body surface area which is burned. Now see this, this head and neck area is 4.5% of our body surface area. This frontal side of the upper arm, 4.5. See this? Frontal side, okay? The anterior aspect of the upper limb, 4.5%. The back side of the upper limb is also 4.5%. Back of the head is also 4.5%. The frontal aspect of the body or torso, we say, is 18%. The whole of the back, okay, till the buttock area is 18%. The anterior aspect of the lower limb is 9%. The posterior aspect of the lower limb is also 9%. So, what is the message you have you have got here? Now examine the patient well. Remember, only second degree burn and third degree burn patients are examined like this. So if you think, okay, the whole of the uh, torso or the chest as well as abdomen, the anterior part of the chest and abdomen are burned, then it's already 18% burn in that patient. If only the uh, face is burned badly, you know, around 4.5% of the bone. If only the anterior aspect of the lower limb, one of the lower limb is burned, that is 9%. Like that, okay, we can find out what is the total percentage of the body surface area that is burned. So accordingly, in children, see this, this is 7%, 10%, okay, 8%, like that. And in case of infant, okay, still another type of classification is used. You don't, you know, if you cannot remember this, okay, I will not, uh, you know, uh, put a lot of uh, pressure on you because these, these uh, you know, chart, they're available easily everywhere uh, inside the hospital, in the bone unit, you know, these are stick on the wall, actually. So you can easily see there, and judge accordingly in the patient. Now, let's move further. How to manage according to this extent of the burns? Why we need to calculate how much body surface area is burned in the patient? Because this has a very, very important implication regarding the management. How much fluid I give to the patient? It depends on what body surface area is burned in the case, okay? So percentage of body surface area burned is used to determine the need for fluid resuscitation. We'll talk about that extensively in the next class. Today we are having lack of time now. Patients not requiring admission to any hospital should receive appropriate management and follow-up, including cleansing of the burned area, debridement of the loose or non-viable skin, application of topical antibiotic or non-adherent dressing, or sometimes even biological dressing. And one more uh, type of therapy, which we use is called is iscarotomy or fasciotomy. Okay, now let me clarify this because this is a very good concept you need to get from here. All patients, we don't need to admit in the hospital. If the extent of the second and third degree burn is not much, okay? For example, around two to three percent of the burn uh, is there, then we clean that burn, okay? Debride that burn, remove all those non-viable tissues from there 
apply uh, topical antibiotics like silver sulfadiazine is one of the very commonly used topical antibiotics. We'll talk about that later. And then follow up the case. And if necessary, you can go for a skin graft later on. But if the percentage is too much, then you don't do that. Admit the case in the hospital, right in front of you, you treat their cases as a daily basis. One other thing is the scarotomy or fasciotomy. Now, what is this scar? Okay, this is pronounced as a scar. Now, what is this? Now, see here. A scar is a slough or a piece of dead tissue that is cast off from the surface of the skin, particularly after a burn injury, but it is also seen in certain other condition like gangrene, severe type of ulcer, any necrotizing wound, or even in case of cutaneous anthrax. Cutaneous anthrax, anthrax is a type of disease. Anybody tell me what is the causative agent of anthrax? Yes? Microbiology. Anybody remember? Uh, said, the, uh, said the bacillus anthracis. Exactly, you're right. It's bacillus anthracis. Bacillus anthracis. Okay, this bacillus is a gram positive bacilli. It's an example of gram positive bacilli. Anthrax uh, uh, is not that commonly seen these days. Okay, uh, but uh, we can see this different type of anthrax in some parts of the world. These are the different things. Now, a scar is a slough or a piece of dead tissue which is there on the surface of the burn. And we need to remove this scar. Then only the healthy granulation tissue can fill that area. So this is known as scarotomy. And fasciotomy is done in the treatment of, okay, compartment syndrome. Compartment syndrome, which we'll talk in the next time.